Hello and welcome to this episode on Imperial Talk. In today's episode, we're looking at the unfortunate rise of a few rebel dissidents on the Outer Rim territories and how you, as a loyal member of the Empire, can make sure that their little distraction is put down swiftly and for all. In this episode, we're going to look at how to deploy your Star Destroyers, how to make the most out of your stormtroopers and their inability to hit targets, as well as how to utilize the latest in Lord Vader's discipline on the mental powers of the Sith. Although this religion might be antiquated, it is believed that this is the ultimate weapon that will lead to victory against these rebellious units. Hello, and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. In today's episode, we're obviously looking at the setting of Star Wars. That's right, I'm bowing to peer pressure, social pressure, and of course commercial pressure, as the latest Star Wars movie 3.5 launched a couple days ago. If you haven't watched it, don't worry, there are no spoilers here. This is simply how you will run your game moving forward after the hype of the latest film. And of course, with films coming out regularly now every single year, and with the new TV show Star Wars Rebels, or uh, yes, I think that's what it's called, and uh, more Star Wars stuff on the line as Disney capitalizes on the uh, expenditure of purchasing the rights to the whole franchise, we have to take a step back as GMs and go, well, this is going to be one of the topical games that are requested at our tables. How do we make the most of it? There are a couple systems that you can utilize, and there's even more that have come out now, the Fantasy Flight game, for example, and each of them has got their own merits. This particular system I'm actually running tomorrow for a group of friends was written in 1987. Then subsequent editions came out in 2000, and more recently 2014. Why the delay for such a long release time between franchises? Is it because one corporate hung on to the rights? Not really. It's because this version, which was released in 87, was published four times until 1995, when eventually it uh, fell dormant. And the reason for its popularity is it's a very simple system and a very good system in comparison to some of the others. So, whatever your poison, whatever system you choose to use, the question remains, how do you run a Star Wars game that doesn't involve, well, the typical stuff? What is the typical stuff? And of course that leads us straight into what are our expectations for the setting. Well, our expectations are lots of starships that sail around the galaxy in hyperdrive and can move from one area to another in a short space of time. We expect droids of course, we want lots of droids running around. We expect Jedi and Sith. Well, yes and no, depending on how fanatical you are about sticking to canon timeline. We expect that there should be blasters. We expect stormtroopers. We expect basically two factions, rebels and imperials running around. We expect our imperials to speak with a fairly clipped English accent. And we expect our rebels to all be American, because that just makes sense. So, however you're playing the game, those are what we're expecting. We're expecting our heroes to somehow fit into this space. Now, the majority of the games of Star Wars that I've ever run, the heroes take on the role of the smuggler, rebel, sort of want-to-be independents, who run around getting embroiled in Imperial plots and in rebel plots, and generally have a good time. Occasionally we have a player who wants to play some kind of force-sensitive Jedi or Jedi in training or failed Jedi or Jedi on the rise or Jedi on the hiding, uh, whatever the case uh, in point might be, we've had people wanting to play Jedi. Now each of the systems handles uh, playing Jedi in different ways and how to balance out that force because the Jedi of course are exceptionally powerful in comparison to the average pleb. Boba Fett certainly can't make people fly across a room, or, according to some of the comics, stop a Death Star mid-tracks. So, the Force is a tricky thing to balance, but that's the last thing that we expect, is we expect the Force. Whether it's with you, or against you, or you don't even recognize that it exists, it is actually there. So you've got to pander to all of those needs. How do you do that? 
there's so many visual materials and Star Wars is such a strong franchise in terms of its visual and uh, almost meta immersion into our culture even pop cultures embraced Star Wars on a level that's unprecedented everywhere else the thing to remember and uh, this is perhaps as we start moving into tone Star Wars is a fantasy setting it's not science fiction now I've been over this before and I'm not going to rehash it so there is a fantasy element to it, which means you can have giant creatures roaming around that make absolutely no sense. You have these force-using wizards running around, casting their force spells like mind control and all that kind of wonderful thing. And um, as a fantasy setting, it means that you mustn't be necessarily so restrictive on yourself as a GM. So your setting, I'm bouncing a bit here, but your setting and your tone go hand in hand in this particular setting. And the reason why they go hand in hand is because the tone of the, the piece of Star Wars is actually very complex. Star Wars, originally written in 1977 by George Lucas, focused more on the mythos of a creation myth and of a single world savior, or in this case galactic savior, who rose from obscurity and eventually took dominance by overcoming his own personal demons, while supported by a bunch of friends. This particular story looks at a lot of comedy. We are mildly amused throughout a lot of the films. The latest film doesn't fail to disappoint. We are mildly sad. There are moments of incredible tragedy um, where there are literally characters dropping dead or being frozen in carbonite or just ascending to the force we have moments of supreme drama where we have um, brothers and sisters making out that is typical typical J.R. Martin type of stuff and of course we have the romance element of it so it really is this melting pot of emotions and the tone needs to reflect that we have moments of horror where you have Darth Vader in a dark corridor with his red lightsaber. That's particularly horrific. We have giant space worms that will eat your entire starship whilst you're inside them. Elements of horror. We have lots of shootouts, lots of blaster action happening. So there's lots of elements of uh, combat. And of course, the way that Lucas wrote it was that he wanted the starfighters, the X-Wings and the TIE Interceptors and the TIEs and that kind of thing, to feel like World War II dogfights. So we've got this very strong element of squadron uh, combat, of this old idea of we're doing the right thing because it's the right thing, and um, so on and so forth. We also have this element of oppression. The Empire was dedicated to almost eradicating alien species, and they enslaved a whole lot of them. And uh, we have seen some of that in the films, but not really necessarily expressed as far as it could go, perhaps because of sensitivity issues. Nonetheless, the tone of your Star Wars adventures should be as broad as the film's scope. So heroics next to very large amounts of tragedy, next to strange coincidences, with romance a part of the whole mix. And if you don't have romance in there somehow, you're going to struggle. There needs to be some kind of relationship building going on whether it's father and son which is the most obvious one or whether it's brother and sister or two lovers who just don't seem to get an opportunity to ever come together whatever the case is you need to mix it up and build in your npcs as best you can now that's another thing that we need to look at in terms of tone slash setting your npcs become very important if you look at the NPCs from the first film, the 1977 film, or the 84, or the 85, or 87 film for that matter, the NPCs, Darth Vader, and Grand Moff Tarkin, the Emperor, Boba Fett, for example, they were so iconic as NPCs that they got major starring roles in all of the other films because they wanted them there somehow. Uh, and when I say all the other films, I mean all the other films. They're all there somehow in various shapes and forms. And so the NPCs of Star Wars are almost as important as the PCs. And it's not something that you can plan, obviously, but thinking about your NPCs and before your adventure starts and creating some really interesting characters is what it's all about. And if you ask me in my personal opinion, and I'm going to give it to you anyway, because hey, it's me, the NPCs of the 
the films made between 2000 and 2005 were simply not strong enough. There wasn't enough there for us to grasp onto and really get to know. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we're not too fond of it. The only NPC that was there that people responded to was Jar Jar fucking Binks. And I have to use that language because that's how I feel about him. He received death threats, the first digital character ever to do so, which was quite a remarkable feat. Nonetheless, you don't want your NPCs to receive death threats unless the players actually intend on carrying it out. You want them to be part of the show. So your NPCs, and they need to be varied, you need to have NPCs that we care about, like Yoda, for example, or Obi-Wan Kenobi. You need to have NPCs that we absolutely hate and abhor, like Grand Moff Tarkin, for example, or the Emperor. So they will help set your tone, they will help set the setting for that matter if you can have some kind of npc that's very strong against the players and if you look at what you can do with your player group traditionally your player group like any other sci-fi or fantasy setting that involves starships you will have a pilot you're going to have a gunner you're going to have a medic you may have a jedi or two wandering around depending of course on whether you're playing imperial or rebel ultimately though both sides will have a pilot a gunner a medic a shooter type person, some kind of potential smuggler or someone who's got some kind of dark past. You will have some kind of femme fatale, maybe she's a diplomat, maybe she isn't, maybe she's the mechanic. You have this range of individuals to play with. Unlike, for example, uh, Star Trek, where you've got a lot of roles that are based on occupations aboard a starship and your adventures center around those here the mechanic is the mechanic but that's more background kind of stuff they'll fix the ship in between missions or whilst a combat is happening but that's not really the focus of the stories the story is more about bigger scale galactic events unfolding well, certainly in my opinion that's what it should be about finally when we start looking at things like uh, stories what kind of plots jump out at us from the Star Wars universe this is where we have to be very careful because we can't have a plot where the lead character is trying to find their father ironically that is something that if you watch the latest film you realize may or may not be something that they've gone back to as a constant theme throughout the entire film series that's all good and well we can't really use that anymore could we have a character who's desperately trying to seek their mother well they tried to do that in the 2000 movies and no one really cared so the point is we have to try and avoid what has already been done in these in the movies and what has been done in the movies is such a broad scope that we're going to have to rack our brains for some original thinking now the stories obviously there are the rescue stories again kind of done and done very well we have the showdown with the arch villain story well again kind of climatic we've got spaceship combats we've got secret plans that need to be found we've got romances that need to be pursued we've got exploration of strange worlds that have strange inhabitants we've got fighting with all sorts of weird and wonderful monsters we've got dungeon crawls We've got diplomatic negotiations that need to happen. We've got street chasers. We've got bounty hunters to try and stop. We've got assassins to try and hunt down. Pretty much everything that's been in the films is what we have to work with. So we need to make sure that we're working with it in a way that is slightly different. And to do that, well, that's up to you. Perhaps the crew are flying a ship that's been stolen and that is actually part of a bigger plan because built into the ship is a key component that will allow a certain mega weapon to fire and destroy planets. Maybe you can go that route. Maybe it's a Jedi who's on the run and can't be discovered. Well, again, maybe you can go that route too. My advice when trying to come up with stories for Star Wars is to look at what your players have built and then focus the story around them. If you haven't watched it, I've done a video on the player channel on how to look at your destiny. Now, Star Wars is all about destiny and fate and the Force. If you watch that video on how a player should be working out their destiny, use your players for inspiration. Find out what they want to try and solve or explore within the Star Wars universe and then give it to them, of course, in your own way. Ratchet it up, change direction, change course. Leave them guessing as to how their destiny is going to unfold. But ultimately, you're going to give them 
your destiny. Because if that's one thing that Star Wars is all about, it is the triumph of good over evil. Wherever there is evil, it has been thwarted at the very last moment, just before it appears as if it's about to win by the good guys. And the reason why it's been thwarted by the good guys is because they have been prepared to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. And that is a theme that runs throughout all of the Star Wars movies. Sacrifice of self. The Sith are absolutely against it. They will never sacrifice themselves. The, imp the Empire, which is separate from the Sith and mentality, is all about wanton sacrifice of troops for the greater good. And of course the Jedi is the ultimate sacrifice of self for the greater good of everybody else out there. And the, re the rebels, the smugglers, that kind of thing, are a little bit of sacrifice for cash. The more cash, the more sacrifice. So sacrifice is a theme that needs to run through your narrative wherever you can if you want it to feel like a Star Wars setting. So NPCs should sacrifice themselves valiantly so that your heroes can get out of tight spots. This is an opportunity for you to really explore the idea of a team working together but working together in a universe that's basically willing to destroy itself over what it believes in. Then if we look for movie references, well that's pretty much all there. Watch the films, doesn't really matter which ones you watch. If you enjoy them, that's the important thing. There are of course several series out there. There's the droid animated series, there's Star Wars Rebels, which I heartily recommend. You can watch the Clone Wars, but the Clone Wars was, in my opinion, a bit of a half-hearted attempt to explore the idea of the Star Wars universe and was working with bad source material anyway. I hope this has been helpful in how to run a Star Wars game, since that is what is going to be asked for. How do you balance the Jedi versus the Sith versus the player who's a pilot and has no combat skills? Well, quite frankly, just remember that in Star Wars, the Jedi and the Sith go after each other and they ignore the little people, and the little people go after each other and they ignore the droids. The droids simply run around going, well, I have absolutely no idea what's going on, but I shall be here because it is where the most combat is happening. And nobody will shoot at me. So, until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on Patreon if you want to come and play in a game with myself or just participate in the online conversations. And uh, our big thanks to all of our Patreons. It has been a long year. I thank you all, whether you are a Patreon or simply a fan or a subscriber or someone who's just found this channel. Welcome and thank you for being with me on this remarkable journey as we've grown from no subscribers to now over 7,500 subscribers as we seek our quest to sacrifice ourselves to tell the greatest story that there is, the story of collective narrative with us and our players. And I thank you all for it and looking forward to seeing you all in 2017. Next week I am on vacation in deepest, darkest, hottest Africa. And I shall not have internet access. So, until 2017, I wish you and your players the very happiest of gaming.